Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Agile Ideas. I'm Fatima, CEO at Agile Management Office, Mental Health Ambassador, and your host. In this short episode today, I've decided to share some insights, ideas, thoughts, just some things that may be on my mind. And so this episode and all future short episodes are going to be completely no frills. They're going to be bursts of insight, ideas, inspiration, thoughts, challenges, all those sorts of things. And they're going to come uh, more frequently, hopefully, with regards to different topics and things that are on my mind or I'm observing uh, in the industry or just in general in day-to-day life. And so I decided to do an episode like this to test the waters and see whether or not This is something that you find helpful and you enjoy. And if you do, please let me know because then I'll know to continue doing more of these. Today's short topic is around the Project Management Office, also known as PMO. Now, if you already know what Project Management Office means and what it stands for and what it's all about, then please just Give me 30 seconds to explain for anyone else who's listening what exactly it is. So project management office is typically a group or a department within an organization, and it can be made up of one or many people, and the different sizes apply to different size organizations. But ultimately, it's there to help standardize and introduce economies of repetition in the execution of projects, programs, and supports portfolios. Now, depending on who you talk to, the P in PMO can mean project, program, portfolio, and a raft of other things. But ultimately, a management office is there to provide the opportunity to support projects and programs and support them in execution. And every single project management office I've ever been been across typically does a percentage of the same things and then a percentage varies as well. Now, I know that's a little bit of a sort of roundabout way of describing it, but you can find a lot of information online on what it stands for. For the purpose of today, I wanted to share some of my insights on what I'm seeing in the industry at the moment. Now, as a recap, I've been in this space for almost 18 years. So I've had something to do with the project management office consistently for the last 18 years. And... I've got a few things that are a bit a bit a, a bit on my mind. Now, one of those things is I am for the first time in a long time seeing a significant rise in popularity, interest, and desire from organizations around their project management office. And that look that could be coming from a number of different com- becoming from a number of different reasons. And I don't profess to know all the reasons, but I can say that from what I've seen and at least what I've seen with clients or with people that I've spoken to in the industry, there's a few reasons for that. Projects continuously failing, missing budgets, passing their deadlines and so forth. And that's not new. If you look up a lot of the research on project management, there is typically... um, some high failure failure rates still continuing. And obviously that's different by company and industry. Nonetheless, project management offices typically have a history of being created to help support projects and programs and make them more efficient and help project managers by supporting them and creating frameworks and tools. The idea being that you create frameworks and tools and that are standard and more consistent that you're going to be able to be more productive because you're not spending time waste or wasting time rather trying to create things from scratch. So I find it really interesting that at the moment If you look online, I've had a look at a couple of key sites, including LinkedIn, and I've just looked within the Australian market and there's over a thousand jobs um, open at the moment um, on a couple of platforms that relate to the project management office. Now, that's a lot more than I've normally seen. Um, In the past, I would definitely see, you know, several hundred But pushing a thousand and and not to mention 
that those are only the roles that have the word PMO within them. There is so many different names that come about when you think of the management office function. And those names vary from company to country. So the first observation is that there is a significant increase in demand and interest in the project management office space, which is great. It's great for for many of us, for many of us consultants and contractors and staff um, in all of these, um, you know, in this industry, in these professionals who have um, an interest in making this space better. I think the second reason why there's a rise in, in demand is other than the fact that there's significant amount of challenges in these organizations and projects continuing to fail and whatnot. But I also think there is some organizations that are now, you know, scaling. And as they scale, there's a need to better organize and better coordinate a larger number of projects. And so medium-sized organizations in particular, I've been seeing have a strong desire for finding a solution that involves putting together a better way of consolidating and managing their projects. And one of those things that they've identified is the project management office concept. Now, how and where, you know, is is beyond me as to whether they've become aware of it because they've spoken to their peers or maybe they're watching what the bigger organizations are doing. Regardless of that, there is a desire and an increase in the PMO because of that. And the third reason that I think there is a increase in demand and interest in the project management office space is because of a lot of good work that is being done by PMO ambassadors around the world. That is organizations that are paving the way and creating training and consulting um, and running events and speaking about the topic and really educating people about what a PMO can do, what it does and how it works, and really trying to drive that awareness further beyond just the PMO professionals themselves, but wider into the organizational reaches, such as the executive layer. Now, I will caveat that by saying there is also some organizations that are trying to take advantage of the situation and in fact may not be doing the things that are best for the actual um, the actual profession um, and just trying to ride the wave. And so you do, do need to be careful where you seek your information, what training that you go to and sort of what consultancies that you link into to, to get support make sure you do your due diligence and make sure you do your research because project management offices may seem to some people like a airy fairy administrative function, but it's so much more than that, particularly when it's done really well. It can absolutely transform an organization and the way that they deliver projects. Now, a project management office doesn't replace project management. It doesn't replace good project management. It never has and it never will. Does that mean that project managers can't be part of the project management office? No, that doesn't mean that. They, in fact, can be and sometimes they are. But the the point is just be weary of where you're getting your information and making sure that you are doing your due, due diligence when seeking help and support in the project management office space. Now, I've just given you the three observations as to what is going on in the industry in terms of the rise of interest in PMO and the three reasons I think those ca- those may be. Now I want to tell you about three challenges I'm observing in that space and then I'll give you a suggested solution for that. So one of the problems that I'm seeing time and time again in, and this problem is increasing because of the increase in demand naturally for the project management office. But most of the organizations that are looking for this service or looking for this person, or they typically are looking to hire an individual or a function or a consultancy, regardless of the, of the approach. But typically I'm finding that most of those roles, the thousand or so that I've, I've shared 
are individuals. They're looking for individuals, project mani- a program at project management office managers rather. Now, unfortunately, many organizations don't actually know what they need. They, it's like saying, I want ice cream. Okay, what flavor ice cream? Does the ice cream have nuts in it? Does the ice cream have dairy in it? Is it a sorbet? Is it a red ice cream? Is it a, you know, rainbow ice cream? Can the ice cream come on the stick? Do you want the ice cream in a cone? Is it a waffle cone or is it a cup? There's so many variations of ice cream and I always compare that to the variations there are in and around project management offices and project management office managers themselves. I've been one many, many times in so many different industries and working with companies around the world. And I can tell you that no two are the same. So it baffles me that organizations typically will leverage, you know, their HR function, let's say, or something similar to go out and look for a project management office manager and really not have any idea other than to copy and paste what's in another job description into theirs. And you can see that happening because of uh, sort of errors in the in the job ad or seeing the duplication of job ads across a couple of sites. But just copying and putting it in there and saying, we need that. Now, if you don't know what you're looking for and you don't know, and going back to the ice cream example, what flavor, what size, what style, etc., you're not going to make the right decision. You're going to make a wrong hire. When you think about the project management office, you need to understand what stage are you at, not only with your PMO, but what stage are you at when it comes to project management? What level of maturity is your organization at? What type of roles do you have in your organization today that are in and around governance? Because project management offices have a lot to do with governance. So do you already have roles that exist that relate to governance? Is this an enterprise level project management? Is it a project level, program level, or a portfolio level? Maybe it's an IT project management office. Maybe it is a divisional project management office, or maybe it's a mixture of all of those. Now, there is so many variations, and if you don't know what you're looking for, you're going to make the wrong decision. I can tell you firsthand that no... No two roles, as I mentioned, are the same, but no two PMO managers are the same. I've known really, really good PMO managers that are capable and exceptionally talented when it comes to program level, but then elevate them up at the enterprise level and they have not done that before and they don't understand that space and the change that is required across a value chain when you're looking at the enterprise level. So you need to understand how that function is going to perform. So... The first problem is not knowing what you need. The second problem, and I could go on, but I'm going to go three. The second problem is organizations that are going out to market for the same exact position they've just hired. And that position, for whatever reason, hasn't worked out. And what they've done is they've gone and advertised the same role and they're now rehiring for that. Now, again, this is not an assumption I'm making, but firsthand observations for numerous positions where the project management office uh, hire that they're looking for is for the exact same team, department. In fact, I've spoken to one company who has already replaced their PMO manager three times in in the span of two years. In a banking organization many years ago, I came in and replaced three previous PMO managers and was the fourth in less than two years. Now, you have to ask yourself, how much time and money goes into all of these hires and this recruitment and the onboarding and the placing these people and yet continuously getting it wrong is only going to result in more problems down the line. So why not focus on getting it right up front? the front of the the hiring path as opposed to waiting and then making a mistake and having to go through that whole process again. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. So, so the second one is the repeat problems. And that is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting to get a different result. It doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. And then the third problem 
is when your project management office hire, your PMO manager, is not reporting to the right place or the right person rather. If you are bringing in a PMO manager and that person is reporting to someone who has absolutely no experience with project management offices or understands the intricacies of it or understands what makes a good PMO versus a bad PMO or what level of governance is great in terms of the balance with bringing different types of uh, support and in addition to the support and the governance and there's also the change in innovation side there's so many different parts within the project management office and typically if you're reporting into someone that has no idea it's going to make it very difficult for that person to be successful but also it typically means that person probably is the hiring manager and if that person's hiring something or someone rather for a role that they've got not really much idea about now i get it that was there's a lot of people that say oh i've run many many functions before i've I've done project management for 30 years that doesn't mean you've done pmo and there is a difference because pmos have to understand project management and they need to understand it well to be successful A project manager does not need to understand PMO to be successful. They can be a really good project manager and really not have much of a clue when it comes to the project management office. So that is the third problem. Now, what can you do about it? Of course, I can tell you that the best approach is to go to a boutique consulting firm that focuses heavily on the project management office which is something that Agile Management Office does, but that's not the purpose of this podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to ask organizations to consider perhaps they could look at upskilling some of their internal staff into the position of a PMO manager. Because who better to know your organization than your your existing staff? Now, I know that may sound you know, counterintuitive because, hey, we're hiring, that means we don't have anyone, but that's actually not the case. For example, in most of the organizations I've worked in, I've been able to mentor or coach or guide junior members of staff to step up and take the reins of a project management office. Now, I'm not saying that someone who has got some general experience that is a junior can go on and start running an enterprise PMO. No, but with the right support and some time, they will be able to build up their experience, particularly if they're proactive, resourceful, diligent, patient, and really, really knowledgeable when it comes to project management and the benefits of project management. So why don't you think about upskilling your staff? It would be far more cost effective than all of the hires and the fires and the rehires that's taking place you will be able to make sure that you have the right person for the need that you have, be it the stage, the maturity, and the different types of uh, functions that the PMO can provide because you've got people in your organization that already know that and are familiar with that. You'll know what function you want them to perform and you'll minimize repeat problems because you're not going through an entire hiring and firing cycle and trying to find people constantly because the first or second or third hire didn't work out and then it may not eliminate the wrong management problem but it may be worthwhile to consider how much knowledge or experience the person that is going to be managing the PMO has and thinking about whether there is a gap in their understanding and looking at providing them some or some guidance and some advice and possibly some training as well to help get them up to speed. So there you have it. There is my thoughts on the PMO at this stage, the opportunities, some of the challenges and some of the observations. Now, if you or someone you know is having some of these challenges and wants to upskill existing team members that could potentially be the project management office or be part of that team moving forward, then reach out to me and I'd be happy to give you some further insights and guidance on how we can make that happen. 
You never know. It may just be the best decision for you because you will save a lot of money bringing in expensive PMO consultants to do the work when you could utilize some of our insights, toolkits, frameworks to actually upskill your team as opposed to trying to replace them. And final point I wanted to share as well, for those of you who have been following me on LinkedIn, and if you haven't, please do so. I've just recently joined partners with the PMOleader.com. So that's the PMOleader.com. The PMOleader.com is a global PMO leadership community. It's an opportunity to expand your knowledge, advance your career, improve your PMO and add value to organizations. There is already in the world a lot of activity when it comes to PMO. And as I mentioned at the beginning, it can be quite overwhelming when you think about it because you've got all sorts of training and, and, and books and articles and so much more. But when we think about it, the PMO leader is usually thought about whilst ignoring leadership and one is not more important than the other. So on the PMO leader site, we shine the spotlight on both PMO and the leadership sh- uh, leadership site. rather. The PMO leader is a one-stop shop for you and your team and it provides solutions ranging from online courses to professional services to the latest in PMO technology and forums, books, articles, you name it. What it doesn't do is only share some preferable technologies or some preferable course. It actually finds, collates and shares everything. So then you can make an informed decision. Our purpose is to improve PMO leadership and teams around the world. And although there are work in the world, there are small communities creating pockets of PMO knowledge and interaction. This is the PMO leader community of communities. So go to www thepmoleader.com and you can find out more. Otherwise, get in touch with me on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll talk to you soon.